Today we're going to talk about my all-time favorite top pattern. Now this is a pattern that I turn to every year and I make sure that I include a couple of versions of it because, well, I just wear it out every year. And that pattern is Quick Sew 3928. Now, you're probably looking at this pattern and thinking, really, that pattern? <laughs> I mean, it's it leaves you wanting more, right? However, it, when you look at the back and the style lines, it's actually a pretty decent top. And I'll actually walk you through some of the changes that I've done to it in case you'd like to incorporate that. But this is my favorite view right here, which is the shorter one. It has a rounded hem, and then it does have pockets with two different pocket bags that get sewn right into these darts. It's a dolman with grown-on sleeves, and then it has that funnel neck. I actually made the top that I'm wearing right now for the collaboration that I did with Natita over at So Natural Day. And if you're not familiar with her, Every month she has a sewing buzz where she talks about some of the new patterns that come out, some exciting things in the sewing community. And then she also does an interview with a sewist. And for October, I was that interview. And honestly, I have no idea why she chose me, but I was so honored <laughs> to be there talking with her and just chatting up a storm. And when she had said, hey, let's collab and do your favorite all-time pattern, I mean, I just, I had to tell her it was Quick Sew 3928. <laughs> and her immediate response was, really? <laughs> Yes, yes. I mean, when I look at this, I, I don't know how I ever had any kind of vision for this pattern, but I'm glad that I did. Um, what's really cool about this pattern is actually how it's drafted. The designer had actually put in cut lines that are kind of go like this around those pockets. So that way you can raise those pockets all the way up if you're cropping this top. And quite honestly, I suggest you crop the heck out of this top. Um, I tend to bring mine all the way up to there. So I get rid of a whole lot of extra yardage there. And honestly, it helps me kind of squeeze these tops out of a lot less fabric. And well, we'll get into that. Natina actually goes through the pattern, shows you how unique it is with those cutting lines and how you can move it. So make sure that you click on her link right up here because she did a really great review on this pattern. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite fall and winter top pattern is. Now let's talk about sizing for this pattern. Um, so that way you can get an idea for what the actual pattern calls for and the size that I made up so that you can get an idea for how you can play around with the ease. So this pattern goes from an extra small to an extra large and the bust range is 31 and a half inches up to 45 inches which really doesn't seem like much. Now the extra large is 43 to 45 inches which is where I would typically fall into. However, I've never made an extra large in this pattern. Um, in fact, when I made this top that I'm wearing right now, I cut a size medium and I graded out to a large at my waist slash hips area. Because I knew that I was going to be cropping this so that it hit at my high hip area and I was getting rid of that rounded edge, I didn't, I just knew that this was going to work. Plus, I mean, I've made it 80 million times, so I wasn't worried in one bit about this one. So a couple things to note about the actual construction of this top. This top comes together pretty quickly. The instructions are really good and they're easy to follow. Even the pocket instruction where you sew them into the darts, I mean, when you look at it, you're like, oh, this can be a little confusing, but I think they really do do a good job in the instructions of walking you through the process so that way you get a beautiful result. And in case I haven't mentioned it, this pattern is designed for woven fabric. 
I mean, I would make this in a stable knit as well. It would be beautiful in a Ponzi. Um, my chosen fabrics for this, though, tend to be cozy fabrics. I love making this up in a flannel. And that's actually what I have right here. This fabric right here is a flannel that I picked up from Fabric Mart, I think last month, but it had gray stripes. If it's still available, I'll make sure that I put it in the link below. The front is cut on the fold as well as the back. Now it actually calls for this collar to be cut on the bias. And I'll tell you, I practically never do that. Mostly because this square is pretty large. I mean, this is only half the width. It's actually double that because you fold it in half and then I like to fold it down when I'm actually wearing it. So it's quite a large piece and when you're cutting it on the bias like that, it can require quite a bit extra fabric, you know? You just, you need to purchase a whole lot more. When I make this, I actually do not, I actually cut it on the straight of grain and don't worry about it. And I really do like the stiffness that cutting it on the straight of grain provides. This pattern does come with sleeve bands, so that way you can get a nice finish on the edge. I rarely use those, although I have used them and they're fine, but really I use the front, the back, and this piece, and the hem facings. Those are important if you're making the rounded actual hem. Make sure that whatever version you're making, you stay stitch that neckline. Um, you really don't want it to stretch out. I've had issues with that stretching out. I've also had issues with my curved hem stretching out as well. Because I've had issues with those areas growing, I've learned to stage stitch them really early in the process. The instructions don't tell you to do that, but trust me, you're really gonna want to, or else it's gonna be impossible to finish the neck band. I mean, you could get creative, but we want as simple a so as possible. So one of the biggest changes I make to this pattern is I cut the collar on the straight of grain. Another change that I make pretty routinely is that I crop it a good five or so inches and then I also omit the pockets. And I omit the pockets largely because I, I found that I've never used them in the past, but not only that, I don't like the floppiness that they have right there on my stomach area. I'd rather just not have that additional bulk there. Last year I actually made a reversible version. And actually, let me let me pull that out so I can show you. This is the reversible top that I made. And actually, I got this wool from, I'm not sure where I got it from. It might have been G Street Fabrics back in the day. But it's black on one side and it's white on the other. And it's super cozy in winter. Now, when I did the actual collar, I did cut it in half because I wanted to break it up. So that way when this is flipped down, it's white on this side. And when you flip it to the other side, you get the black collar. Like that. This one does have the rounded edge. Because I wanted this top in particular reversible, I had to get creative with the seams. And you all, it was actually such an easy solution. You know how you end up with the seam allowance on the outside? Well, I decided that I was gonna cover that in this faux leather trim that I had picked up from Joann's. So I did that on all of the seams. I did it down the arm, I did it across the shoulder, and then I also used it to enclose the bottom of my actual garment. I really didn't want to use a hem facing that you would see on the other side. So to keep it as clean as possible, that's what I did. And really, I didn't even fuss when it came to this side seam. I finished the hem first, and then when it came to this side seam, I just kind of squared it off and sewed across it and it worked out really nicely. I will say that I did run out of this faux leather from Joann's. So I did hop onto Etsy and order some pre-made bias tape 
and you all this stuff is really amazing mostly because it's a little stiffer so when I'm sewing over it it's not bending and pulling in weird directions this stuff is really nice I'm gonna take a look for the actual Etsy seller or the Etsy shop that I had purchased this from and I'll put it in the description box below so if you're interested in getting some for yourself you can I mean it came in this roll and you can see the two ends are actually already in there and it's kind of fused, but it folds really nicely, which was definitely a bonus when putting this top together. Oh, and one other thing, just try to roll with the punches. Every now and then something's gonna catch you a little off guard. For me with this top, I actually accidentally attached my collar on backwards. So you can see here, I have the seam, this should have been in the back of my actual garment. Now, this isn't going to drive me nuts, so I didn't bother unpicking everything and reapplying it. I'm just going to leave it as is and, you know, like laugh a little whenever I see it. I still really love this top. <laughs> this pattern is actually out of print at this point, so unless you find it from someone who's selling some older patterns, it might be a little difficult to find. However, I was actually thinking that I would like a couple of knit versions of this, and so I'm going to hack one of the, um, well, I'm gonna hack the Wanda Dolman from Sita and Our Patterns later this month, so that way I can get a nice little knit version of it. And actually, I'm thinking about doing it with this double knit that I picked up in Florida. I just think that'll be really beautiful and super cozy for when these temperatures really drop. So I'll be sure to show you how I do that pattern hack to include this nice big old collar that you can fold down on it. I think it's going to be really cute and it's going to come together so quickly because you can just sew your knits right up on your serger. Well, this is my favorite top. It's Quick Sew 3928, which is Quite an interesting looking pattern, <laughs> but so worth a sew. I really encourage you all to take a look at the actual pattern drawings and just give some of these patterns that don't look really appealing a shot. And you might, you might be a little surprised. Don't forget to let me know in the comments what your all-time favorite pattern is. And you all, until next time, I sincerely hope that you find joy and have a wonderful day.